glory He has come to set the captives free His power and love displayed for all to see Is Christ in me the hope of glory Christ in me the hope of glory He has come to set the captives free His power and love displayed for all to Christ in me, the hope of glory, all glory and honor belongs to you. All glory and honor belongs to you. All glory and honor belongs to you. All glory and honor. We lift you up higher and higher. We shout as one, your holy choir. We proclaim that you are God. Sing Christ to me. The Christ in be the hope of glory he has come to set the captives free his power and love displayed for all to see is Christ in me the hope Christ in me the hope of glory come to set the captives free his power and love did split for all to see is Christ in me the hope of glory all glory and honor belongs to you all glory and honor belongs to you all glory and honor belongs to you. 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 All glory and honor belong to you. We lift you up higher and higher. We shout as one, your holy choir. We proclaim that you are God. We lift you up higher and higher. We shout as one, your holy choir. We proclaim that you are God. We lift you up higher and higher. We shout as one, your holy choir. We proclaim that you are God. We lift you up higher and higher. We shout as one, your holy choir. We proclaim that you are God.
just a thought that came to me while we were singing, and it's nothing against who God is or the song that we're singing, exalting him. But the thought that came to me was um, that we're created in his image. Here we are saying no one's like God, but God created us in his image. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory. You know, Jesus said that he, he thought it not robbery to think of himself equal to God. And that's not exalting us above the Lord at all, but knowing that that same spirit dwells within us. starts to tremble at the light that you bring and when you walk into the room every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you
begin to rise Cause there is resurrection life in all you do And when you walk into the room The dead begin to rise Cause there is resurrection life
I was thinking all the time we were singing that song. When you walk in the room, when I walk in the room, what happens? Does it, cha does it change the atmosphere? What we don't understand, beloved, is the fact that that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. That same Spirit, when He walked in the room. I was thinking this morning, I was reading Matthew in the, in the Message Bible. I think it's chapter 9. The town official came to Jesus and said, My daughter just died. And he went with him. And when he went to the house, all the mourners were there. And he walked into the room. And the first thing he said was he made a declaration. She's not dead. She's just sleeping. And I think one of the things that fails us to understand is That we think we carry a different spirit. You walk in a room of a situation, you're there to change the atmosphere. Whatever the circumstance is. And that doesn't mean you're not going to get opposition because he got opposition. It says they laughed at him. They mocked him. And what he had to do was put them all out. First thing he did was took the authority that he had and he put them all out. And once he put them all out, then he took her by the hand and said, Arise. I thought as I was reading also this morning, they, part of the story was they brought a paraplegic to him. And the first thing Jesus said to him, Thy sins be forgiven thee. And they mocked him. And I think that's one of the biggest things we fear is the fact that we're going to be mocked and if something doesn't happen, we'll look like a failure. And so he asked him an important question. What's it easier to say? Thy sins be forgiven thee or take up your bed and walk. And so when they couldn't question him about that matter, he turned to the paraplegic and he said, take up your bed and walk. I said to Sister Fran this morning as I was reading that, I said, you know, I wonder what would happen if the paraplegic had turned to him and said, I can't. I can't. And I think that's where we all are many times. We think we can't. When the scripture over and over again says, we're given all things that pertain unto life and God likeness. We're there to change the situation. We're not here just to have a life that we enjoy. We're here to help others enjoy life. That's what we're here for. When you walk in the room, do you make a difference? Do you make a difference? And you do make the difference because you're carrying Him. You're expressing Him. You're not here to represent you. You're here to represent Him. We are ambassadors, the Scripture says. We are ambassadors. Our ambassador has the same authority 
to declare whatever the leadership of the country desires. And I believe that's exactly what Jesus gave his disciples. And you don't have to be perfect to do it because when he gave charge in chapter 10, when he gave charge to his disciples and he sent them out, sent the 12 out, he sent Judas Iscariot already knowing that he was going to be the one to fail him. But he gave him the same authority, gave him the same charge, gave him the same of everything. The fact of the matter was, he knew he was a thief and he gave him the purse. And I think sometimes what God does with us is he gives us everything just to see what we'll do. Because he already knows what we'll do. It's us. You don't know what you will do. You don't know what he can do through you. And I don't know about you, but I want to walk in a room and make a difference. Because I already know that 90% of the people around me are messed up. That's what it said about Jesus. He said he, he knew the heart of all men. So he just didn't commit himself to them. He came to change. Not just himself, but change them. And those around him. So my challenge to you tonight in our worship is this. You got to understand that he has given us all things. And we're here to make a difference. We're here to change. Change the atmosphere where we live. Change the atmosphere where we work. Change the atmosphere of whatever we do. Change the atmosphere. And if it needs declaration too, you make the declaration. Because I, maybe, I, maybe I'll ask this. I asked this question on Sunday. How many went home and read Psalms 2, verses 8 to 10? Well, I'm going to challenge you again. Go home, read Psalms 2, 8 to 10, and then begin to function. Begin to realize that you are the kings of the earth. You are the judges of the earth. You are the ones that's going to make a difference. You're going to have to make declaration about some of the things that are in the earth today. Jesus got in a boat and things were against him. Guess what he did? He spoke to the waves. He spoke to the winds. Is it any wonder that the Bible says that the whole creation groans and travails for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's when the sons of God begin to manifest who he is. That's what it's all about tonight. Amen? Amen? That's why we gather. That's why we're here. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, guys. When you walk in a room, do you make a difference?